So this problem relates conservation of energy with circular motion. And so in this problem, we have a roller coaster that's starting at some unknown initial velocity at the top of the, the first hill, which we're told is 24 meters. And it's going to go down and it's going to go over a second hill, which has a height of 2 thirds h, so it has a height of 16 meters. And we're told that that hill has a radius of curvature of 37 meters, which means we can treat that hill as being part of the arc of a circle, and that circle has a radius of 37 meters. And when it's at the top of that hill, there's two forces that are acting on it. You have the force of gravity pulling down on it, and you have the track pushing up on it. And with this, the faster it's going, the smaller that force of the track is. The net force is going to be the force of gravity plus negative force of the track. the force of gravity is towards the center of the circle. The force of the track is away from the center of the circle. And so we make all the forces that are towards the center of the circle positive. All the forces that are away from the center of the circle we make negative. And so they want to know the maximum initial speed that it can have so that it stays on the track at A. So if it's just staying on the track at A, the force of the track goes to zero. So this is similar to when you have a, a roller coaster car going around a loop, and it's on the inside of the loop, and you're finding the maximum speed that it, or the minimum speed that it can have to make it around the loop. You set the normal force equal to zero, and that's when it was falling off. This, the faster it's going, the smaller that force of the track is going to be. And so it loses contact with the track, so it would start going airborne when that force of the track is zero. And so as we go through and look at this, you have that the net force, the smallest that that net force can be, is equal to the force of gravity. And so we have that the net force equals m times g, and we have that the net force equals the mass times the maximum speed divided by the radius. And so putting those together, we have that mg equals m times the maximum speed divided by the radius. So this maximum speed that it can have at the top of hill A would be the mass, which they don't tell you, times, it's the square root of the mass, or the, it's the square root of r times g. So it's not the height of the hill, it's that radius of curvature. So that radius of curvature was 37 meters. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we get that this maximum speed that the roller coaster car can have when it's going over that hill is the square root of 37 times 9.8 which is 19.042 meters per second. Okay. This is not the answer that we're being asked for in this problem, though. We're being asked to go one step farther and work our way backwards to figure out what speed it started with at the top of the first hill. So going back and looking at this picture, at the top of this hill right here, 
we have a speed of 19.042 meters per second. And so now we're going to use conservation of energy to figure out what this initial speed was at the beginning. And so at the beginning, the initial potential energy is m times 9.8 times a height of 24 meters. The initial kinetic energy is 1 half m times that unknown initial velocity squared. At point A, the potential energy at A is m times 9.8 times 16 meters. And the kinetic energy at A is 1 half m times the speed that we just calculated, 19.042 squared. So we're going to use conservation of energy. The initial potential energy at the top of the first hill plus the initial kinetic energy at the top of the first hill is going to have to equal the potential energy at point A plus the kinetic energy at point A. So this initial potential energy plus this initial kinetic energy is going to equal the potential energy at A plus the kinetic energy at A. And so plugging in those values, we have m times 9.8 times 24 plus 1 half m times that unknown initial speed squared equals m times 9.8 times 16 plus 1 half m times 19.042 squared. So they don't tell us the mass of this roller coaster car, but every single one of these terms has a mass in it. So I can divide both sides by m, and that mass drops out. So simplifying this a little bit, I have 235.2 plus 1 half v0 squared equals 156.8 plus 181.299. So again, that was 9.8 times 24 plus 0.5 times v0 squared equals 9.8 times 16 plus a half times 19.042 squared. And so simplifying this, or you know, subtracting the 235 over, adding everything together, we have that 0.5 v0 squared equals 102.899. And so multiply both sides by 2, take the square root, so we have that the initial speed, again, it was the square root of 205.798, which is 14.3456 meters per second. So if this car had a speed of 14.3456 meters per second at the beginning of this hill at the top, So if it had that speed up here, then it's going to be going just at the speed of 19.042 meters per second when it goes over that hill, which is the biggest speed that it can have before it goes airborne. So if it started any faster at the top of that first hill, it's going to be going too fast and it would come off the track and go flying. So again, a lot of problems start to involve 
you know, multiple ideas. So this one involves circular motion as well as conservation of energy. And so you just have to go through and put the different things together.